Okay, it looks like we're live. I can make sure I get this stuff going. That's not a good light there. Okay, we should be... There we are, okay. Whoa. Gotta get some stuff set up first. And <laughs> all right, what else would I need? I think for the most part I got everything else. Good with these guys. And actually I can move this back. Alright. So we should be yeah, sound alerts are off because I'm not on. But we are live. I mean, again, the background's not that great because white paneling everything. But we should be good. I think that's pretty much all it's going to go on. Oh, it's probably that too. All right. So before we get started, uh, I'm going to take a little time before you know everybody gets here. And yeah, I'm kind of cut off in the kitchen because I'm a, I'm a tall guy. If you guys can't hear me well, let me know. I can try to speak louder. Uh, for the most part, I believe I've got everything I need set up. Ooh, need that and that. Set everything. That is the question. Do I have everything? I have no idea. Um, but today, we are actually going to do our live cooking stream. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do... I've got what? I got three different menu items. But it could be four. Actually, it might be... i got to decide what I want now. Okay. Typically... What we do, we kind of cover the basic Korean meal, like what people would eat every day. We'd have one jjigae, which is like a, a stew or a soup. You have one kind of main dish, which is usually like a meat. You'll have the rice. And then you might have a few side dishes. So for today, we're going to try to make it very simple. We've got our kimchi here, which... Ooh, it's very nice and sour, which is good. You want kind of like a, not like a pungent smell, but you do want it to be a little sour. And we also have pretty much all the other stuff. Now, this is one thing that might surprise you. This is Korean beef. As you can see, Korean beef. The price for, how much is this? No, it's not 100 grams. What is that? It's 207 grams. The price for it, if you can see here, is one, uh, 18,588 won. So, for this 200 grams of beef... Oh, thank you, Vivi, for the, the biddies. Thank you so much. For this amount of beef, 207 grams costs about $20 just for this little bit. So much money, yes, exactly. I'm up, JC, because I'm doing this cooking stream. I'm hungry. I actually, I haven't eaten all day because I was planning this. I'm like, you know, I'm going to be eating late. I have to do this. But yes, yeah, so much money is all for the food. Thank you, Vivi. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you guys kind of at least three different easy recipes, one that's going to be, you could probably eat every day, and I'm going to kind of mix it. So I do have beef, that's right, look at the merch, right? Looks good. Um, I do have the beef, which is going to be kind of our main dish, but it's just going to be the beef uh, kind of cooked over the, the stove, really nice. We also have some canned tuna and some mayo, which we're going to make what's called chumokbap. 
Jumukbap is actually really easy to make and actually I am missing... Oh, I'm missing my gim. Now this is actually kind of the gim you would put on top on it. Uh, so it's like the sprinkling one. Really good. And all that you need is really just these three things. The canned tuna, just no flavor, regular, mayonnaise, and then the gim. Because you're going to end up making something fun. Uh, no, it's not an expensive, it's not a special occasion thing. Korean beef in general is really expensive, where you can get Korean pork for a lot cheaper. But the Korean beef is just, it's like, uh, they want it to be like Kobe beef, like, or the Wagyu beef. So it's made in the same way, it's just very expensive. Uh, but, you know what, why don't we start... Where are they? No. Ah, here we are. Alright. What we're gonna do, we got uh, plastic gloves, and actually, I probably still want to wash my hands before I start. Now, hello, hello. Akimodo, anyone? Hello and welcome. Yes, crafty. Hydrate. I will. Actually, I got special hydrate. Special hydrating. Special hydrating. If I can. All right. There we go. Thank you for the hydrate. Oh, that's very nice. Okay. So we're gonna start with the chumokbap. Chumokbap is very easy to make. Actually, before I put the gloves, I probably want to get this stuff in. All right. <laughs> so, what you want to do, get the can of tuna. You want to try to get all the juice out. All right. Can of tuna, right? into the bowl. That's right. Pop is rice. So chumok pop. Chumok is actually fist. So what we're doing is we're actually going to be mixing it in. Take the mayonnaise. You put a little bit in. You don't want to put too much because you're going to end up mixing it around. I mean, if you like a lot of mayo, that's fine. But tuna mayo is the start, yeah. So chamchi is tuna. Mayo in Korean is mayo. <gasps> Thank you for the biddies, Nikki. Thank you very much. So now, generally, after you get it mixed up like this, you can kind of see like it's just mixed together. I don't really like mayo a lot, but you can put a lot if you want. Now, I like to season it, so I got some pepper here. So just put some pepper in. And, again, black pepper, just mix it around. So you can see, like, this is all the tuna from the one can. And, got that rice over here. You can take old rice, like this was taken out maybe about five hours ago, just to kind of sit and rest. Actually, we need a little bit more. And you're gonna be mixing it around. So you're gonna be mixing all the tuna and the rice together. That's right, mix, mix, mix. 
And this depends too, like if you want a lot of rice, you can put a lot of rice. If you want a little rice, you can put a little rice. But this is very easy to make. So, after we've got that, the one thing I love to add is this gim. <laughs> wow. Okay. So this gim, if you can see here, it's actually, as you can see here, it's meant to just be sprinkled on top. So gim is actually seaweed. So this is like a little sweet, a little salty, but it's more of a topping. And it's a nice little snack. You just want to put some in. So this seaweed too is not too salty. It's also really just nice flavor that it adds into it. And now, let me get the other glove on. Not the whole bag. I barely put any. The whole bag is actually still here. So now I've got both gloves on. That's right. So, again, they call it chumokba because they, you literally you just put it into your hand, roll it out, done. That's one. And you can put it in your little bowl. And again, you can make it big, you can make it small, it's all up to you. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll show the bag again. So this one, it, if you can see, it says, what is it? Gwangjeon, Hejo, Olive, and then Gim Cha Ban Bokgum. So the Gim Bokgum is most important. That means that it's the stir fried and it's the seaweed. This is very good, even if you're just eating rice, it's just very nice just to add. Actually, I wish I had a little plate to put these on instead of that bowl. Let's see, I missed it, but how much was the Korean meat? Oh, give me a sec. The Korean meat cost was 1,800, oh, not 1,000. 18,588 won, so that's about $20. Just for 200 grams of meat. We can make a little big boy here. That was actually perfect. All right. Oh, that was actually really nice because the Korean mayonnaise is like really oily. So it's nice that it doesn't taste that much like oil. Mm. That's right, I'm showing my merch. All right, now let me get these in. I might need that later. Okay, so after you have it all done, and I'll try to show a better picture, you can take bokum jamke, which is the sesame seed, but it's been uh, kind of fried. You just sprinkle a little bit on top. So now, as you can see here, if I can show it, that's what you got. And again, yeah, if you wanted to, you can add spicy mayo. Like they actually, in Korea, they sell the wasabi mayo, but uh, it's, it's really up to you. I'm thinking like, cause it's 3 a.m. for me, spicy might not be that great cause I'm gonna be making a lot of kimchi stuff too. So dish one complete. Mm. It's always nice, yeah, okay.
Now, let's see. Dish two is going to be the soup. We have two different kinds of soup we can make. Number one we have is what's called kimchi jjigae, which I think everybody knows kimchi jjigae. Number two is denjang jjigae. So denjang jjigae is the soybean fermented paste. So, <laughs> which would you guys like to see? Do you want to see me make the uh, denjang jjigae or kimchi jjigae? <laughs> Vivi says kimchi, number one, okay? Uh, I'll let you guys choose because again, there's two different ones. Number two, okay, so one says denjang, one says kimchi. I will say, uh, I may be able to make both, but if we're gonna do denjang jjigae, then I can make something else with the kimchi. Otherwise, it's gonna be just kimchi jjigae and then it's gonna go on to the third one. So we have a few different choices. Spread says number three. Well, number three actually is gonna be something different that I'm going to be using this for. So just really, oh, you know, okay. Let me show you with this then. If you ever go to H Mart and you're looking for a good soybean paste to use for this kind of soup, they actually make one that says denjang jjigae and it's the tadam. This is actually really good. If you look at it, it actually smells, well for me I like the smell, but it looks like peanut butter almost. It's really dark, that kind of brownish red. It does have a little spice to it as well. So that could be a good possibility. No, no nut. It's all the tofu, so it's a soybean. So this one too is actually not that bad of a choice because this one you can do very vegetarian style. You don't have to have any meat to it. Where the kimchi jjigae, you can add meat. You might not have to, but you can add meat. Or you can add things like uh, tuna, like canned tuna as well. Or the, if I got it here. Ugh. You can add mackerel, the gongchi. Oh, the golden one, not gongchi, golden one. So yes. The denjang is very fermented. Some of them can be very strong smelling. So if it's, if you're very worried about the smell, be very careful, because this could make a really strong smell. For me, I enjoy it, because I'm very used to it. I eat it a lot. And it's something that can be, you know, people can get, uh, they get headaches off the smell. And some people will say even sometimes it smells like marijuana. It just depends on how strong, how old, how well fermented it is. Oh no! All right, Spray, go have fun. <laughs> you get it from the smallest things? Well, when you go to like the meat restaurants, when you order sangyeopsa, which is like the pork belly, or if you eat the beef, usually you'll get the denjang jjigae as service. And service is just like a free thing. Rapokki is actually really good too because it's just ramen with the dakbukki. That was, I was tempted to make dakbukki at home, but it does take a little time and I didn't want to, I didn't feel like doing that one. Okay, let's see then. While we're doing, while we're trying to make that choice, I'm actually going to get the next one set up, which uses the ceramic kind of bowl, which isn't a bowl, it's like a ceramic pot. So, give me a sec here. We'll use that. Actually, we'll put that on the side. So, that's right, the torso bowl, that's right. A lot of times, with that kind of bowl, with what I'm gonna make, which is called geranjim, which is the Korean style steamed eggs. Korean recipes don't really call for exact measurements. It's all what they call like sonma, 
So son is hand, mat is taste. That's right, you can bake bread in it, and actually you can do a lot of things. The jjigae, the soups are actually really good in it too. But while we're waiting for that, I'm actually going to start this up. And we're gonna crack three eggs into a bowl. Two, all right, three, done. Now, okay, the eggs you don't eyeball, the water you eyeball. So to the three eggs which I put into this one, I'll end up putting some salt, some pepper, <laughs> and then you just mix it, right? Oh, so black and red is because it's easy to cook with, it's easy to just have, and it's cheap. I think you can get one of these bowls for less than a dollar. And it, I mean, it's kind of that plastic, so kids use it all the time. It's just something that you can use really well. So here too, like I said, I just mix it up. I mean, you can't really see well here, but it's just mixed up. It's not anything special. Three eggs, salt water, uh, salt, and pepper. I put some water into the, the dolce bowl. And right now, I'm just boiling the water. Now, when we boil the water, we're gonna wait for it to get a little hot before we actually put the eggs in. And then, we're actually gonna need a spoon. So while that is heating up, did we decide, do we want kimchi jjigae or denjang jjigae? So, okay, everybody in chat right now, if you want to see how to make kimchi jjigae, put number one, if you want to see denjang jjigae, which is the fermented soybean, put number two. Whatever, actually, oh, I can't do it from here, can I? I think, can't I? Can't I? Nope. All right, you want two? Okay. Two. Two? Yeah, because I'll then I'm going to add a new recipe for the kimchi and that's fine we can do that so then we're gonna go for number two which is the denjang jjigae so that is with the fermented soybean so for this we are actually gonna use tofu which this is actually just regular Korean tofu we're going to need about half an onion. And I only have one potato left, but really potatoes are good. So potato, onion, tofu, and this, of course. So we, we are gonna move camera. Okay, so let me see if I can get this going back. Oh, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Well, as we're trying to get the camera set up here, that's actually, that's kind of good. So you can see I filled up a pot of water here. This pot is still boiling, uh, not boiling, but it's getting hot. We are going to be adding in We got one kind of big spoon. We're actually gonna go with two. So you can see that it just kind of sits in there. So as we get the water on, we're gonna be stirring this around a little. Now, this too really depends on how much you wanna make, and that's gonna determine how much you'll actually need.
Now while that's going, I'm gonna be washing a potato here because we're gonna have to cut this. I'm gonna have to get my onion ready as well. This actually separated. All right, so sometimes too, you do want to test it, make sure that you don't get these kind of clumps. Eventually, they will boil out. Add some MSG, never. Okay, so as the clumps are out, we have to test it, right? Okay, it should just be like a little salty. It should also add a little spice because that's what this one is and it's good to go. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, but the water is boiling on this one. So right now it's actually very important that we get this started now. Okay. So now that that one is in, as you can see here, we actually have to make sure that we do mix it around a little. So the reason why it's called jim, which is it's steamed. We kind of want to make this scrambled. Let's see, how much spice do you add to it? So if you want to keep it more subtle, you just want to keep maybe like one. If you want to add more, you can always add more, but each person's taste is a little different. For this right now, we actually, for the keran jim, the egg, steamed egg, we're just gonna keep stirring it a little bit, letting it kind of clump up. As you can see, it is starting to clump a little. And as it continues to clump, we're gonna keep stirring until it's about 80% done. So who taught me to cook this stuff? Actually, when I was younger, I loved cooking. And I actually had a dream of being a chef. Oh, wrong way. So I ended up learning a lot by myself. And I have, my wife also, she doesn't really like cooking, so it helps me out, because I love cooking. So you can see here too, like it's starting to really clump up, which is good, that's exactly what we want to see. And we, like we said, we want it to be about that 80%. Now again, this, if you make this, it's gonna get a little dirty because it's going to have to steam all the water up and it's gonna grow a lot more. So right now you can see how clumped it is right now. This is actually the perfect time for me to, oh, where did it go? Just put the top on. It's got its own hole to let the air out. So that's gonna work out just fine. Now you could set it on a little bit lower. Now this is good to go. Again, gotta do some cutting. Now I'm probably not gonna add the whole potato. At the moment, the water level is actually pretty high in this one. So I probably added a little too much. Uh, for me too, I love keeping the skin on the potato. Not a lot of people do, so kind of do it how you want. You know, there's no real recipe to it. It's all by, like we said, it's the sonmat, it's the hand taste. So some people like it that way, some people don't. Now you'll see here too, it's starting to boil in, which is good, we want that to boil. Now, as you can see, it's boiling out a lot. I probably should have kept it up more like that. But it's fine, it's getting all that water out, and that's exactly what we want. We don't want the water in there. But honestly, in Korean cooking, this is gonna happen a lot. 
And again, with the eggs especially, it's the water that's trying to leave because we do want the water to steam the egg instead of actually like staying there. This is good. And it's going to happen anyways, so you might as well just let it happen now. No, there's not gonna be any boom. Yeah. All right, since my potato is now done, since it takes a long time to boil over, we're actually gonna put the potato in. Yeah. Okay. Luckily, I don't think we're going to need all of the onion as well. Or not the whole half. And again, it's all up to you. However much you want to put in, you can put in. And it's all, like we said, it's the sonmat. It's the hand taste. Now I am kind of doing it kind of messy. I actually put a little too much water in, but that's fine. Denjang jjigae and kimchi jjigae, actually what's really good, <laughs> well, the whole onion is actually really big and I still have to put in the tofu. So while that's starting to cook a little bit, I'm going to take care of the uh, trash here. Make sure I clean up the onion and the eggshells. Okay. And actually while that is going, I, since I will need this bowl, I'm going to clean this up a little. Deep clean later, okay. So, again, we're gonna be mixing this right now. Probably wanna turn that fire down a little bit more. Ugh. Well, JC, sometimes onions you just have to eat, you know? So Korea, they sell these little, like really half size tofu, which is actually nice because it's somewhat firm and it's actually perfect for the chige. We're just going to put that whole thing in. All right, so. Miss Garlic, ooh. So this is cooking. And that gives us time to check in this, which it's, if you can see, it's not quite done yet. It's getting there, so we just gotta stay on a little bit longer. I'm gonna keep this somewhere close. Well, don't worry about the onion. I'm actually gonna use the onion later as well. So, right now, we've got these two things going. This is gonna take a little while to cook, but Oh, it's perfect, perfect. That's almost done. Now, what we're gonna wanna do is actually, we're gonna get ready for the other thing, 
which is what we're going to use the kimchi with, which <laughs> is going back to this, which is the buchimkaru. So we're going to make the kimchi pancakes. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Vivi, yes, you need to start a cooking stream. That'd be great. And kimchi time, yes. Oh, it smells so good. All right. So for this, we are going to need our, our faithful green bowl back. And we are going to start with this. So on the back, it tells you you should use about 500 grams of this to about four cups of water. But that's for half the bag. And we kind of used that last time. But we're not going to try to make too much this time. So what we want to do is we want to put it in. And again, it's like you're making pancakes. You put some in and you put some water. You don't want it to be too thick, too thin. And you just slowly start mixing it around. You want it to be a little thick. Now, if you're gonna make a lot, then yes, follow the back recipe. But for me, cause I'm, I've got all this food that I'm gonna be eating, I think I'm just gonna make a few. And they can get really big. So right now, it's kind of thick, like pancake. Okay, so the name of this one is the kimchi buchinge or kimchi jeon, which it translates to the kimchi pancake. So right now I'm trying to get all the clumps out. Yeah, so a lot of it, you can see here, this is about the thickness you want. It's like soup, but not really soup, but it's like that pancake batter, so when it cooks, it's nice and thin. So, where am I? Always gotta make sure you check and stir. And, We're going to need to grab our kimchi. So here we've got the kimchi. We're just going to cut into like little edible pieces here. And we're going to dip it in. Well, not really dip. You're just going to cook, cut it, put it in. Now, the end pieces as well, don't be scared of them. Don't throw them away. It's actually really good. You can eat it. You can just cut it up more. It's really nice. So here too, really depends how much kimchi you want to put in. I'm just going to put in a little bit more. Okay. No, if you put it all in, it's not going to cook well. Mm, that was good. So, this powder is actually more just like a regular pancake flour without the sugar. So right now, when you look at it, it should be kind of this consistency, like it's not water, but it is kind of sticky and the kimchi is there too. You just give it a nice mix. Okay, we're going to check on the eggs, which we don't want to stay on too much longer. Okay, good. We are actually going to remove those from the heat. Good, we're going to let that stay nice and warm. Let's see. 
Oh, all right, play lab. Well, thanks for stopping by, man. Okay, while that's going, we get our frying pan. Now, I need to tighten this guy, but this is going to be fine. You want to get your frying pan? Uh, maybe. I mean, I use just like regular vegetable oil. I just want to get it nice and hot, get the oil around. So we're going to make sure that it actually gets there. Now, a lot of times too, what people will do, they'll make like the kimchi pancakes in the same frying pan. After the pancakes are done, they'll make like the kimchi fried rice and other things. So there's a lot of other things you can make with it. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna clean up a little bit. Take another drink. Thank you guys for making that happen. Okay. So, here is where we're gonna go back to the pan. If you guys can see here. Okay. Yeah, you can see, all right. The pan should be nice and hot. The oil should be covering the bottom so it's nice and non-stick. And then, all we want to do is we want to pour, actually it looks like we might have made enough for just one, which is kind of perfect. But we do want to get all the nice kimchi stuff out. Okay. Now we do want to, whoa. We're going to try to spread this out. I might have made it a little too thick but that's okay because the kimchi is actually going to make it a lot thicker okay so we're going to let that cook and we're going to put it on low heat the reason why is if you put it on high heat it's going to cook too fast and you do not want it to cook too fast for the tendang jjigae we actually want to check the potatoes if the potato is cooked, you can pretty much finish it and it actually might be done. Oh yeah. Woo! That looks good. Okay. So you see it's nice and crispy on one side. See? Nice and perfect. <laughs> Vivi heard it? Yeah, you heard it. So now, for me, I find that the big secret is after both sides are cooked, you want to make sure that you cook it a little bit more on both sides. So when you cook it a little bit more, that's going to make it a little bit more crispy. And you can see too, like this is the kind of orange color you want because that's all from the kimchi flavor. So if we look at the bottom, you can see it's cooked, but we do want to keep it up a little bit more. So we might turn the heat up to get that nice little brown edge to it. I will say that worked out really well for me because it just flips nice and easy. So this one too, I didn't make it too thin. So this one is called kimchi puchinge.
자, 김치 무침개 Okay, you want to see the eggs? Okay. Now, let's go like this then. Oh, I should have kept it up. The eggs. Oh, so, jeon is actually the same thing. It's the, the pancake. So you can call it a kimchi jeon, and that's the same. Now, the egg, as you can see here, it's actually died down a lot. It's still steamed, but what we're going to do, we're actually going to add to it. If I can get this set up again. Okay, so here, chamkirim. This is sesame oil. So we're going to put some sesame oil in. That's what I thought. Push. There it goes. All right. So we've got our oil. We don't want to put too much. So I just put a little bit in and I can try to show you. You can see I put a little bit just in. A little bit. And then, where did it go? Sesame seeds. We're gonna put that in on top. And of course, the kim, the seaweed. Very great choice to put on top. But I keep on, there we go, all right. Perfect, now, a lot of restaurants too, they have their own recipes for it. They'll put things like carrots, they'll put like the, the salmon roe, a lot of good stuff. I really enjoy it, and it's one that I eat all the time. Okay. So, kimchi pancake, and you can see it's big, but it's really nicely done. So, let's see, that was one, two, three, four. Wow, okay. That means I've got to start cooking the expensive beef. Now, I'm kind of lazy, so I'm going to just cook it in the same pan. And again, there's no real specialty to this. This is just cooked how it is, however you like. We're just going to cook that. I should do more. So we're gonna let that cook. I also need to get that. Most of the story, thank you. Cheers. Or as we say in Korean, come by. Or come be. Not come by, come be. I missed your hydrate. Alright, well, this one's for you then, BB. A 
always have to multitask when you're cooking Korean food. Okay, so the meat is done. I'm gonna pour myself another drink. There we go. Now, I will say too, I went shopping earlier today. I spent about a hundred bucks, just kind of like things I need for the week. And then for this, one liter of beer was like $2. Very good price. And we're gonna move this over. Now there are a few other things that I've got to do. I still have to actually wash the sesame leaves and some lettuce, because that's how Koreans eat with their beef. They never just eat it flat out. Ooh, that was, see, look at that. It's very nice, very well cooked. Okay. So, okay, this one here, because I gotta wash some anyways. These are the sesame leaves. So where you get the sesame seeds, that's where these come from. Many foreigners actually, when they try them, they don't like because the texture has like a little, almost like a, a hairy feeling to it, but it's good. Well, shoot, I need to move. And we're gonna wash just the regular like lettuce or cabbage, whatever one that you feel most comfortable with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do make your tongue kind of dry. They have a strong flavor and a kind of a strong smell as well. So I'm not gonna need a lot. Oh, I should grab more than that. Oh, you three leaves. And the good thing is like that kenip, the sesame salad, uh, sesame leaves, they sell for like a dollar, like under a dollar, I think. Okay. Now, there's actually one more thing I gotta make, which we're gonna end up using soy sauce, oil, and that onion. So generally when we eat meat, we have like a dipping sauce or salt. We're not gonna do with that. We're actually gonna make a little bit of a different thing. So we're just gonna put it into a little bowl. If I can open the sesame sauce, there we go. Good. So we're gonna just pour some in. We're gonna pour the sesame oil in as well. If we can keep it opened. Oh no, that jumped on the kimchi pancake. Oh no. That is not good, hold on. I mean, it's gonna taste fine with the kimchi pancake, but a lot of it spilled onto the counter. Oh boy, all right. So, all right, Nikki, thanks for stopping by. That onion. Which we gotta... That 
onion wasn't really perfect or great or anything. It was kind of old. But what we want to do, we want to just cut some of the onion. And yes, it is raw onion. All we got to do, put it in and kind of mix it around. So when you do, you eat this with the beef, like dip it in. Oh, it's so good. Little onion skin. All right. So now, I have to grab my spoon. We're going to flip the camera around. We're going to get to eating. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Let me move some of this stuff away. Some stuff we didn't even have to use. It's always nice to clean up. You know, you want to have a, a nice clean work area. You also want to make sure everything works well. Uh, <laughs> okay, whoa, my beer, all right. That side or that side? That's the question. Got so much food. Time to eat. That's right. Time to eat. So I'm trying to figure out how to set the table up. Yeah, actually, just like garlic, I would have brought some garlic, but I honestly, by myself, I'm not going to eat that a lot even though I do like eating it as well. All right, bring the kid up to you a little closer. Dip. Ooh. Now, I do have some rice here as well that we were working on that actually, it's always good if you keep in the rice cooker too much, it's hard. So everything at once, oh man. That's everything at once. So we've got the chumokbap. We've got the puchinge, the kimchi chan. We've got the keran chim, which we can actually open now. We've got the denjang jjigae, which is the fermented tofu, uh, for fermented uh, soybean. We've got the dip for the meat, and we've got sangchu, which is the lettuce, and then we've got the sesame leaves, and we got rice. Everything's here. So, it always comes out to the taste test. Now, this is very Korean style, just eating everything right here out of the pots and everything. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. I actually, I love the egg. Kiranti is one of my favorite ones. And you can see like, it's steamed, it's cooked, everything's good. Oh yeah. That's good. It's still really hot, but it's so good. Yeah, in Korea, they eat everything pretty much out of the pot. Especially like as a family thing, it's always together. Oh yeah. Now, I really do want to get into the kimchi pancake. Now, I did spill some of the sesame oil on it, so I gotta be careful, but we can see, like it's like a pancake, just with kimchi, and I'm gonna dip it into the sauce we made for the meat. Oh yeah, that's actually really good. Oh. Even with the excess uh, sesame oil on it. Mm. That is good. Now, I will say, some things are still good if you have to wait like the next day to eat them. Things like the kerantin, the eggs, eat right away. Do not let it sit a day. Taste changes. The kimchi pancake is fine. You can eat later, it's fine. It actually tastes pretty good still. Heat it up in the microwave or put it back on the fry pan. It's really good. The tenjang jjigae. The soybean soup, 
it's actually just like chili. The next day, taste gets a little bit better. And it's really good when you just mix it with rice. Vivi, I agree. Eggs reheated, not good. When you get it nice and fresh, hot like that, it's perfect. Now, what I should have done is actually I should have cut the meat a little bit. So I'm going to teach you guys two different Korean methods to actually eat the meat, right? So method one, you take the kenneep leaf, you take the lettuce, you kind of lay it in. You take your meat, you dip it into the sauce, and I'm going to grab a few of these onions here. As you can see. Oh yeah, that's actually good too. And then you just like roll it. And then in one mouth, you just... Hmm. Uh, the onion did drop. And truth, yes, I am drinking. Mang, thank you for the sub. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we did talk about that one. And yes, beer. Okay, so. That's right. The. Oh, God, let me see. The second method. The second method. Everything you need in one place. You need, you need grease in one place? All right. Second method is actually really funny to eat. And whoa, you will see a lot of people do this. They will take the kidney, right, the sesame leaf, with the meat, and just nice and easy way. Why? Why does it make you so happy, Vivi? Going back to the beer. Oh yeah, and again, it's like, especially girls with the makeup and like you don't want to touch everything, just hold it up. And really it's with anything, like even the onion. Nice, quick and easy. And I've got the extra rice from earlier that I'm eating, so. Only about the food. <laughs> Oh, so good. Now, I still have the chumokbap, which we can see, you can put it into a spoon. And actually just the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makeup is very true in in very big in Korea. <laughs> yep. It doesn't make any sense at all. But that's just how it is. Now, I do want to kind of... What I really like to do is like with the rice inside, I'll actually take the tenjang jjigae and kind of mix it inside together. So you can see like everything's just mixed together and you can mix it. And many restaurants, people do the same thing. And then just eat it. It's so good. Woo! So good. That's right. Nom nom nom. That's exactly right.
Well, in Korea too, it's like a very big image thing. Hmm? Alright, hold on. Gotta give my dog some food. Swing to big pa, big pa. Swing to bowl there. Sorry guys, give me a sec. Dogs always smell food and they want food. Gotta make sure I give them a little bit of something else. <laughs> well, as you can see behind me here, he's eating his food. The other one is here waiting. Gongju. But we gotta keep eating. I gotta eat this. It's really good. Now, in Korea, if you can't use chopsticks, that's fine. Many restaurants will give you forks, that's fine. <laughs> the black bean noodles actually making it is really hard. So a lot of people just buy it. And you can buy so much with it. Mm -hmm. So truth, you do slurp in Korea, usually just with noodles. Yep. So when you're slurping noodles, the reason is because it cools down the noodles as it's coming in. Like in the U.S., we're taught, yeah, we're taught the same. Don't slurp, but in Asia, like Korea, Japan, it's actually fine. It's more of a sign of that you're eating it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Just need to go. No. Yeah. Japan, Korea, very big. Give me some onions. Now, I didn't cut my onions very well. Usually they're like really thinly sliced. You get it actually really well in the restaurants. It's totally different. Making stripping is fine. I like usually in Korea you'll hear them <laughs> done. That's right, truth. That's right. Mm-hmm.
Even in Korea, they think of it more like it's a science. <laughs> okay, okay, BB. When you get here, we'll teach. I'll teach you. Actually, I do want to make sure I eat the delicious beef. Oh, but that's a lot for one. Oh. He wants to go out, but he's uh, too big to go out by himself. So, like I said, he wants to go outside. Sunjungi, where? Sunjungi. Where? 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 Ande. Ande. Jim Sebel, session there. Ah, there she is. There she is. Ande. There, I took care. There. Oh. Yeah. Where? Sunjungi, where? 왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜왜
No, no. Oh yeah, pets are awesome. Like, sadly, he actually has a brother, another, well, they're both the American bully dog, but they're both very similar to like Pitbull and a Bulldog mix. We couldn't take him and his brother, so it was really sad because his brother right now is living on her my parents-in-law's farm, but he's not house trained or anything, so the parents keep him outside. And Korea is very bad towards dogs themselves. So lots of children, they see dogs, they throw rocks because they, they don't know how to treat dogs. A lot of adults, especially men, they get drunk. They pretend or they think that, you know, they're strong. They can fight the dog. They beat dogs and it gets very sad. So I always try to treat my dog with, you know, respect and love and everything. Yeah, that's right. Anja. 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 Uchi. Again, they eat better than I do a lot of times. Even this uh, $20 meat. Like, I'm sharing with them right now. Uh <laughs> But I mean, don't we all like I feel like I'm in credit card debt mostly because of my my pets. Best of the best, right? Like my dogs, they pretty much every day they eat chicken breast. Mm -hmm. They want to eat it. Get out, okay? So, I'm there. But I mean, I'm sure you guys are kind of similar to me, like always with the pets. Yeah, they're getting the good meat. I gotta make sure like all the salt and everything's taken out. BB, thank you for the hydrate. Oh, no, not, not Vivi. Sorry, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, anybody who has a pet probably done it, and they know. I also want to eat it because it's kind of expensive meat, but...
이제 없어 얘들아 없어 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 뭐 없어 없어 Now, for the most part, I finished the eggs, meat's gone. I got like one piece of uh, lettuce left here. Which is still good. Hope so. Lettuce is good, especially because the denjangjigae, the soybean soup is actually like really salty. So when you eat it together, you know, you get that salt kind of gone. One, two, three, four. Four different recipes today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you could, if you wanted to, you could just mix it up, eat it that way, that's fine. In Many times they'll just always squish it because it's like for their lunchbox. For the students, for their husbands, for their wives, for anybody. It's very easy to make, put into the, the lunchbox. And sometimes too, instead of the, the kind of kim we showed earlier, we'd actually use this kim, which is like the actual sheet. And we just wrap it around that. Which is also a good snack. Now, those sheets are not actually that hard to find because they kind of come everywhere. Oh, yeah, Costco at, yeah, you'll find a lot for cheap too. Let me show you what I get. So usually we get this and it's not cut. We have to cut it ourselves, but there's a really cool way to cook, uh, cut it. After you cut it open, you just kind of fold it inside and it just cuts it by itself because you fold it so well. It's a very good method to do it, but this here too, you see, they call it cherekim. And this too, it's Korean, made kimchi or not kimchi but the seaweed and then it's got the turgirum which is the sesame oil and then just a little bit of the sea salt so it makes it really good uh those i can eat tomorrow is fine now i'm full and that just means that it's time if crafty's still here time for us to uh begin our our games Oh yeah, Costco's not in Europe, yeah. Yeah. So VV, today we're actually gonna be playing some Pokemon Unite, which is the, the free Nintendo Switch game. But I wanna make sure I kind of take care of my kitchen first. I hate leaving it as a mess. And allure. Oh, you just missed all of the, the, the food. Like we have a, uh, we've got a little bit, two chmokbap left, half the kimchi pancake. We've got tons of the soup, which I'm gonna eat tomorrow anyways. 
Oh, you've been lurking. Okay. Good. I hope you've seen a lot of good foods. <laughs> you saw the cooking. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to clean this counter up tomorrow, too. Oh, it was really good. Anytime I cook, I always love cooking, so I know I love the taste. I'm not too worried about it. But I've got to make sure I at least get stuff soaking, put some lids on stuff so I know what I can eat tomorrow. Especially this thing. <laughs> hey, I'm okay, Jimmy, because I'm, I'm the one who always cooks and cleans anyways. This pot is actually really hard to clean, so you gotta really let it soak well. So I'm gonna start putting this stuff away. Make sure I got everything soaking where it needs to be soaking. is fine because we can pack this up later we'll, we might actually eat these later And let me grab a lid for that. Isaac, glad you could stop by. We've actually got some uh, traditional kind of Korean snacks here as well. <gasps> oh, no problem. Oh, oh no. Actually, this one's fine. So, we actually have a really common bar kind of snack here. They call it the macaroni snack. Which it's just like a the rice popped. And then again, there's like no salt, no sugar, nothing. Go up right with beer. No, there's many pubs and stuff, like when you go there, that's exactly they'll give you a bowl of this stuff. And this stuff's cheap. Literally. This big bag was maybe like three dollars. The other one, which is also good, is we call the Fong Tea. It's just the rice cake, right? But it's not like the American style rice cakes. This one too's got a really funny name because it's not fried, which is like the tiggy, but the bong. Because they have like a little mini looking cannon. They pull the string, boom! That's all you hear, and it shoots out. It's actually really cool. And they just make it from rice. So it's very good, like just a snack on if you're a diet, great diet food. 
Because it, again, it's really just helpful. Okay, so we are going to end up moving over to some Pokemon Go. Uh, no, not Pokemon Go, Pokemon Unite. Let me, uh, again? Ah. Oh. All right, we're gonna go play some Pokemon Unite. So I'm gonna quick set up, uh, change my setup, get ready for that. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have some fun. So see you guys in a bit. So I'm gonna end this stream and then we're gonna meet over, switch over to the computer and we're gonna be good. So see you guys there.